cheaper Iranian short-range FAF 360 and short-range Ababil ballistic missiles open up new opportunities for Russia to make the front lines in Ukraine much more dangerous. Business Insider reports Russia will probably focus on using them to hit tactical targets at short ranges, said Timothy Wright, an expert on missile technologies at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. According to him, it appears that Russian forces do intend to use these missiles and their plan is to hit targets in close proximity to the front line. It is currently unknown whether Russia has already used any of these missiles. Business Insider noted, Oslo nuclear project researcher Fabian Hoffman also expressed the opinion that Iranian missiles will allow Russia to exert even more pressure on frontline targets. IISS missile expert Fabian Hins has previously argued that the use of shorter range Iranian missiles could free up Russia's longer range Iskander missiles for additional attacks on targets deep inside Ukraine. While these Iranian missiles may not bring new capabilities to Russia's war effort, they will offer greater flexibility and, most importantly, additional numbers, he noted in one of his reports. Recall that in August, Reuters, citing sources in European intelligence, reported that Iran was preparing to supply Russia with hundreds of ballistic missiles with a range of 120 kilometers. Later, the European Union received verified information that Iran had provided Russia with missiles. At that time, EU foreign policy spokesman Peter Stano declared a significant material escalation of Iran's support for Russia's illegal war of aggression against Ukraine. The unanimous position of EU leaders has always been clear. Brussels will respond quickly and in coordination with international partners, including new and significant restrictive measures against Iran, Stano said. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that Moscow received ballistic missiles from Tehran. The transfer of missiles to the aggressor country was also confirmed by Iranian official Ahmad Bakshish Adestani. According to him, Iran does not interfere in the war directly, but sells weapons to Russia to meet its needs. South Korean opposition leader Lee Jae-myung was convicted of violating election law and sentenced to a suspended prison term Friday by a court that ruled he made false statements while denying corruption allegations during a presidential campaign. If it stands, the ruling could significantly shake up the country's politics by potentially unseating Lee as a lawmaker and denying him a shot at running for president in the next election. But Lee, who faces three other trials over corruption and other criminal charges, is expected to challenge any guilty verdict and it remains unclear whether the Supreme Court would decide on any of the cases before the presidential vote in March 2027. Lee told reporters that he plans to appeal Friday's verdict at the Seoul Central District Court, which gave him a sentence of one year in prison, suspended for two years. Under South Korean law, Lee would lose his legislative seat and be barred from running in elections for five years if he receives either a penalty exceeding a 1 million won fine for election law violations or any prison sentence for other crimes. Lee, a firebrand liberal who narrowly lost the 2022 election to conservative President Yoon Suk Yeol, had steadfastly denied wrongdoing. The ruling at the Seoul Central District Court drew intense media coverage and seemingly thousands of protesters. Surrounded by police lines, Lee supporters and critics occupied separate streets near the court, shouting opposing slogans and holding signs that said Lee Jae Myung is innocent and arrest Lee Jae Myung. There were no immediate reports of major clashes. Prosecutors indicted Lee in 2022 over charges that he made false claims related to two controversial development projects in the city of Songnam, where he was mayor from 2010 to 2018 while campaigning as the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party. One of the comments cited by prosecutors is related to suspicions that Songnam City in 2015 changed the land use designation to allow a housing project on a site previously preserved as green space due to lobbying by private developers. Lee said during a parliamentary hearing in October 2021 that the city was instead coerced by the national government to make the change to the site in the district of Baekyeondong. Prosecutors say there's no evidence to back Lee's claim, which has been denied by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. 
Prosecutors also cited a TV interview Lee gave in December 2021, when he said he didn't know a senior official at Songnam City's urban development arm during his time as mayor. Lee spoke a day after the official was found dead amid an investigation into a property development project in the district of Daejangdong, which reaped huge profits for a small asset management firm and its affiliates and raised suspicions about possible corrupt links between them.